Hello and welcome to another episode of 420 Grams here on newsclick.in. Uh, we have Mr. Randy Singh back in the house. We thought we were a little bit worried, uh, a little bit scared that he was upset with us and had run away. But turns out he was just really busy doing a lot of stuff. So this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what he's been up to and also how that sort of feeds into the larger conversation of what's happening in Indian football, especially in the off-season. Uh, at least for the men's game. Arjun Pandit is here as always. So, uh, to start off with, Randy, just give us a brief roundup of where you've been in the last couple of months and what's going on in your life. Last one and a, one and a half when I was working with Neroka Football Club. Neroka was supposed to play the Super Super Cup, which, you know, we were preparing well, but then we couldn't as uh, they were, the officials were not too happy uh, with the AFF, whatever, due to that. You know, that was my best platform. Mm. But then the sad thing is that we couldn't take part. But at the same time, good thing is that I could spend one and a half month with the team and we played two tournaments, local tournaments, uh, and we won. So that was a good experience uh, for us, actually, and for me. No, and, and so since then also, we've uh, heard the development that the classic group has pulled out of Principal the sponsorship sponsor. of okay. Neroka which leaves sort of what has been over the last couple of years the leading club from the northeast in the country kind of high and dry without the funds or the sort of backing to push for the I-League next season. Uh, firstly, it's a bit of hard luck that all this went down just when you got charge of the team. It, it, it is a bad luck actually. You know, I, I really had a great time working because I know a lot, all of them, mostly because I've been following them for the last three years. and. Class, what Classic has done by sponsoring Neroka for the last three years, I think they have done great for Manipuri football and Manipuri players. And nobody have heard about Neroka before, before Classic started taking over. And then in the last three years, what they have done will be the best example. It's just that it's a sad thing that they will not continue. But like we were talking about it, if Neroka can continue uh, with, the, with the Indian players, you know, it will be very difficult to get a sponsor again because Manipur, we don't have any private industries and it's very difficult to get a sponsor. Mm. Uh, what's the hit like, uh, Randy Bhai? So, just for people who are watching, uh, what's the hit on uh, Naroka in terms of finance? What's the kind of budgets you have for a season, keeping in mind the number of foreigners you've played last season? So, Naroka, if you see the players, the Japanese players, Australian, uh, the Brazilian, uh, they are good players mm. and uh, Classic has spent quite a lot. I mean, not, not compare, I'm not comparing with the ISL or, or the best club, Mohan Bagan East Bengal, but those players have play, already played in, in Mohan Bagan and in East Bengal. And they were in Neroka last year, so they were spending at least 20 to 25 lakhs a month. 20, 25 lakhs a, a month? month yeah. And this is a 12 month season or a. I think six to seven months. Seven months. Think, yeah. But then again, now, as Classic has part, have parted ways with Neroka, and the big question is who is going to come as a title sponsor? Hmm. This is the big challenge for, for Neroka officials right now. And because Classic has already started their own academy, they will concentrate on the 13, 15 and 18. And in a few years, when things, are, when things get better, as a clear roadmap, they are planning to come back on their own as a football club. So right now, if I, if I would say, uh, so you're spending close to a crore, uh, 1.2 crore mm -hmm. in a year with foreigners, mm -hmm. and you're playing the I-League, what you did last season. Yeah. But say you cut out the foreigners. Yeah. That was about how many? Five or six foreigners? Six foreigners. Six foreigners. Five, yeah. So you cut them out completely, like say what a Lajong did. Mm -hmm. Then how much does your budget drop to? Budget will drop drastically. But then whatever Lajong did, if Narokan can do the same, this will be a, a very good experience for the, for the local players because all throughout they'll be getting a chance to perform every week in, week out. But at the same time, all said and done, it's very difficult to play without foreigners and you don't want to lose every match. And I can understand the way uh, Lajong have started. The first match, the way that without any foreigners, they beat Aizol. And it was one of the best matches I have seen. But after that, they just con couldn't continue with the form. And for the official, for the players, when you start losing, even though it's a good experience, when, the, when you start losing every match, it hampers the whole club. And so... For me, if they can add one or two foreigners, at least one striker or a defender with local players, if they can't sign six foreigners, I think that should be the way. So, 80, 90 lakh, you're saying you guys should be sorted with two foreigners? Yeah, 80, 90 lakhs. If Naroka can, can come up with 80, 90 lakhs, I think they, they should be able to. But 
to get 80, 90 lakhs in a place like Manipur. We'll tell all our followers. <laughs> hey guys, 80, 90 lakh. We can actually, what we should do definitely is yeah? we have some, we have, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. We have a couple of partner platforms who are running very successful uh, crowdfunding campaigns. It's called Our Democracy. And uh, so what they've actually managed to very successfully collect funds transparently for a couple of candidates who are standing in the elections, uh, those who wanted to collect funds in a clean manner where it's available for everyone to see where the funds are coming from. But I mean, maybe it's not a long-term solution to... But no, since Niroka is... A, ha, since, especially since Niroka is a community club, and I think there's a strong local following, if you put 100 rupees, just like the lottery money, it's not... That's difficult. You know, in, in this organized world right now, it's not like it's Bengal and Mohan Bagan where I can, you know, where we used to get 10, 15 lakhs in a year. I think uh, there was no as a title sponsor as such. You know, every membership we're chipping in. But in this organized world these days, I think in new generation, I think it's very, very difficult, you know, if, if, if you go that way. So you have to have a proper amount organized, you know, yeah, where yeah, yeah. you don't miss out on the, on the player's salary. I think the other thing that also Classic brought to the table was that because it was sort of a large uh, organization, the hospitality part, the staying part was also taken care of. When visiting teams were coming in to Imphal to play the matches, they were also staying at their own hotel. So everything was kind of functioning pretty smoothly. And I think the first year when the I-League happened in Manipur, uh, Naroka got that whatever recognition that they were the best hosts of the season. Yeah. So, uh, what I want to ask you was, how much if Niroka, as sort of today's best known club out of the Northeast, can't find sponsorship, sponsorship and raise money, then isn't this a situation that other clubs are feeling much harder? Sagulban United, Trao, uh, women's club like Eastern Sporting Union, mm -hmm. uh, who were the women's league champions. And this year, I think they're not even playing in the Women's League because they don't have the funds and their players have been picked up by richer clubs and, you know, the usual stuff that happens. How difficult is it overall in, in, the, in Manipur and in the Northeast to find that kind of money? Yeah, it is very difficult. See, now, if we talk about Classic, the way they have organized, it's nothing less than, than, than ISL if you, in terms of organization, yeah. if you see. Yeah. The message as a Manipuri to see those kind of organizations, but because we, we haven't seen in our days, we have not seen. Mm -hmm. If you see right now also, if you see Manipur League and I League, the way they have organized, if you go to the studio, stadium, there is this big difference. And the way they have organized and in terms from the salary, from the stay and the way the, they do things, it was so organized. And now big challenge is if they can, if anyone, whoever comes in, will they be able to organize the same? Like I said, you know, in North East, it's so difficult to get a sponsor. It's, it's easy to be a team from Maharashtra or, 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 or Delhi or Calcutta. Mm -hmm. But like you say, even in, uh, in uh, second division, I League, Trau is doing well. But uh, the budget is not much. Mm -hmm. It's all local players. And to play second division, even Sagolman United that way, it's all local players and one foreigner. It's, it's difficult. So, it's so, not difficult. So, in, to put it in perspective, right now, if Trau is playing second division mm -hmm. and their budget is X, mm -hmm. Then when you move on to the I-League mm -hmm. and you want to be competitive in the I-League, yes. X into how much to actually have a competitive team that can challenge the other teams in the I-League? See, not local players can still remain the same, mm. but the foreigners, four, five foreigners or six foreigners, you have to sign a good one. If you want to uh, be in that best three or four, you can't just play the same uh, foreigners even uh, for the second division and the I-League. There is, there is a big difference. Mm. And for Trau, they, they are also doing well, you know, by, by winning uh, all, the, all the games they have played till now. So they, they are doing well. But then once they qualify, they it's have, to, they have to change, they have to change the team. No, not the local, but at least with the foreigners, they have to get good foreigners so that they can compete with the best four or five. I league is in different level. When we were, ch it's a pretty similar sort of jump up that you see from the I league to the ISL yeah. in terms of how many X. So approximately 5x, five x, five x, approximately 5x would be, because you also see you're playing a much longer season, right? Mm -hmm. The second division is a truncated yeah. sort of season. Uh, you're playing in one location versus home and away. There's a lot more travel involved. So expenses exponentially go up. And I think the point was just that like it's ironic that in a place like Delhi, where there is no real ecosystem for football, 
it's relatively easier to have a club and find money to operate that club. But in Manipur, where football is by far the most popular sport. I don't think so. Well, which Delhi club has actually come close to doing something in the second division? So, which means they don't really have a competitive club. I mean, I easy, it just seems money. it seems easier because you've got the metros there. Yeah, so, there are many problem. more, of course, corporations to approach. Mm -hmm. But that's my point. This I mean, is, yeah, see, is. the thing is, what is the corporation looking for? They are looking if we're putting our money into something, how are we getting good visibility? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're part of a Manipur where football is the sport and you are the biggest team in Manipur, had, why not try reaching out to people outside of Manipur, corporations who would try to put in money into the club and of course move it forward. Yeah, has, is that a plan going forward? Have you guys thought of something uh, like that? That should be a plan. When you are not getting any sponsors from, from your own state, hmm. we should try and look outside. But uh, La Zhong, Ming have tried his best. Yeah. They had, Ming has been there for a outside. very long time in the I-League and yeah. he has struggled to get those sponsors in the last few years. We, we have played two, I have played two years over there and the money was good then because we, they had good sponsor, three or four sponsorship. HTC, but yeah, Nokia, all these. Yeah, and AS, ASL even. Mm -hmm. So after that, I think he has struggled with the sponsors. That's why he couldn't sign any foreign players and, and he wanted to give a, a platform to all the young players. So he has tried that. And it's, all, it's easy to say that, oh, why don't we look outside? But... Hmm. I, I think in, in India, especially outside. now, people are looking outside, but they are still struggle, struggling to find those sponsors. And when you're talking about 30, 40 lakhs, it's, it, it's not much. But then when you are looking for more than a crore, I, I, I think even the outside sponsors, they're also you know, not, not very sure to, to give that amount of money to, to the Northeast. Yeah, I remember when Bhai Chung was really pushing United Sikkim. Yeah. And he used to, and we used to, of course, shoot with him in studio. So, you know, we used to chat and he's like, I have gone from door to door to every big corporation. And I am Bhai Chung Bhutia, the big man of Indian football, the most visible man of Indian football. And Bhai Chung is a guy who doesn't, like, he doesn't make a fuss about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He asks for what is required. Exactly, exactly. And he's like, even then, even then, like, no one pays heed. The maximum is that they'll give me a meeting. But then post that meeting, nothing really comes off it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you look at the numbers uh, that are watching the games, I think predominantly Niroka games are also being watched by Manipur, a Manipur-centric audience or at the most a Northeast audience. And if you look at the sort of per capita incomes of these areas, the mon people, like Renity was saying, he's also running a football school. He's reduced his monthly fee by one third yeah. because local kids just don't have the spending power to spend and it's not a large fee it's 2000 3000 rupees a month right so it's relatively under control it's, it's, but still to so accommodate more players these are the kind of things they have to do it's so bad that you know kids they are from such a humble background poor family that they struggle to pay 20 rupees a day or 40 rupees up and down mm. you know, in such a step remember then the quality, the potential is so high. But of course, yes, we, in terms of sponsor, we are not getting it. Hmm. Uh, we are struggling. Uh, Trout doing well. The big question is, what, when, if, they, if, they, if they do qualify, what will be the next step? Will they be able to, to get all the spon big sponsors so that they can sign good players? Other than that, whatever, the, in, the, in the grassroots level, the, the players, the ex-players, they have started their own, own academy. Not only me, there are many players, Gaurav Mangi, and there are many other players, Dharamjit. So in grassroots level, and we have uh, started the, the, the league for the kids under eight, under six. At least in the ground level, last one or two years, we, we have been doing well. So in another three, four years, I think Manipur will come back. Last five to seven years, I think Manipur football, uh, we, 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 are, we are going, we were on a, Decline. Uh, decline, yeah, downhill. Mm -hmm. But it will take a few years to come back. But what I, what's good to see about it, the grassroots, the, all the young players, all the, all the players who have played in the highest level, they, some of them have retired and they have started their own football school as such. So but, it will come back. But Renri, why, see, so, you know, whenever you talk about Manipur, there is the first sport that comes to mind is football. It's pretty clear for anyone in India, you talk to them, they'll say football. This is the state that has given the country the maximum number of players as well. And this is the state where players are earning their living off football the maximum as well, in a way. Yeah. What role does the government play in this? Since football is such a big feeder to the society, to the economy and all the people growing up there, is there no chance that the government can come in and say, look, we'll give you grants or in some way or the other help you, taki the, the tradition continues? 
From the government, uh, uh, for a state like Manipur, they have got many other problems than football. Yeah. So there is no way, and, and, and I really don't want, of course, I don't have anything against the government, and I know that, they, like I said, they have many different problems, but we, as an ex-player, we should be able to do or, or open up an academy where it can be sustainable. Do not charge like you are charging in the metro cities. Charge a little bit so that you can pay the coaches. And then we have to coach the, the, the coaches first. And which, uh, it, it is going on. There are a lot of ex-players uh, doing into a coach. They are, they are going for a coaching course, which is the, the, the best thing. And, and those players, those coaches, you can, if you can spread, spread out all over Manipur, and, and which is, they are doing it right now. So in another one or two years, we should be able to see uh, better players again. Like, it's sad that Manipur start losing against Jharkhand, you know, in, in a women's football 4-0, and that's the saddest thing. We lost to Nagaland in under-21 uh, uh, Tiao Cup. In the last seven years, Manipur football has not been great. But, like I said, in in last one or two years, what we have been doing in the ground level, I think we should be able to see what, what Mizoram has done in the last few years. They have done great. So Manipur has been running second, but I hope in a few years, we should be able to do much better than, than what we, ha we have been doing last seven, eight years. Just, just wanted to ask one more thing, sorry, just one last thing. That have, since, you know, the demand, I know Manipur football has not been doing well, we all know the results. Yeah. But the demand for the Manipuri player is still as much as what it was uh, before that as well, all over the country. Not the necessarily. But the maximum number of players still playing all over yeah, are from the northeast like, Manipur. Yeah, Mizoram is like... Agreed. In terms of sheer numbers, there are more professionals from Mizoram now playing in India than Manipur, I'm not sure. Agreed, uh, I know I know that was a stat a while back, but my point is for you guys yeah. who have now started your schools, you, Mangi yeah. and Dharamjit yeah. and the rest of course, yeah. have you not thought ki, since my players will be in demand when they're developed, yeah. that why don't I take money from the club and sell them yeah. so that I can then gain some financial muscle yeah. and then put it back into the society or into whichever team. I, I think that's the way. Oh, yeah. the, the, it will take a few years. Yeah, but is there a system in place yeah, for that? Three, four years. Yes. If three, four years, once these players started started doing well, I think you you can sell them. Like like many uh, teams, like Lajong, Lajong has done it. So I think the rest will follow. Cla they have started Classic Football Academy. Classic Football Academy, of course, they, they are going to start as a proper academy, and for sure, in another four or five years, they are going to sell the players because they are spending money on it. So, but it's like while I was coming uh, from Imphal to Delhi, I saw 32 players from Manipur going to Chandigarh Round Glass right. Academy yeah, for a trial. You can see that the amount of, of players who, who are ready to come out, you know, because Manipur has a that's the way of yeah. life for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so Manipur, other than that, there is hardly any, any, any employment. There's a big employment problem in Manipur, and football is the only way to come out for a better living. So it, it's sad to see at the same time, and I'm happy at the same time because the way, because once they get a chance, if they get a per, uh, platform, they will, they, they will not look behind. What, what's happening with you next now? What are you doing the next few months of season plans? Few months, I have got around football school and I have uh, joined as a technical director for Classic Football Academy. Uh, this is for the next few months. Uh, we will work on that because I really wanted to, to continue with, with Naroka, but then uh, with, the, with the problem they're in right now, they are not sure if they, they will play the high league because of the sponsorship. So classic for me, if they can, the, the way the, the, the vision is, I think it looks better. They are coming up in the next three or four years. They want to have classic football club playing in I-League second division and mm. qualify. And before that, under 13, under 15, under 18, uh, they want to have the best. Because in Manipur, like you see, we never had a residential academy in Manipur. Classic, in a few months, they are going to have a first residential academy. So the Manipuri, the, the best ones have gone out. Yeah. But now, if we have a resident, residential academy in our own state, they don't have to travel out. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So we will be able to get the best Massive, Manipuri players. So, so whatever Classic is doing, I like the idea, so I have joined as a technical director. So let's see. Let's see what also, because then like, you're taking 12, 13, 14-year-old kids away from home, away from home yeah. with very little supervision. And yeah, yeah. the purpose of taking these kids is so directly related to the, how they will turn out and how much money they will earn you. Yeah. That no one is really concentrating on the overall development. At least these guys, having been through the system and been in an academy like he was from the age of 11, yeah. they know how and they actually 
put attention into the over like after training he'll sit and have a cup of tea or breakfast or whatever just figure out what's happening in their lives that level of engagement i think they share a common language it's just a lot easier mm. than and frankly like shipping kids to it's pretty much like going to a foreign country yeah? if you're going from manipur to chandigarh or or to chennai or wherever it is you're going it's not not last, so last last 8 months after running an academy i know how difficult it is for for those kids for those Uh, poor kids. Uh, it, it is very difficult for them to to come even every day to join. You know, one hour away, two hour away, and you have to pay fifty, sixty up and down every day. Sixty rupees is is big thing for them. So if we can have a residential 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 academy and select the best players, and uh, money, and uh, it will only help Indian football. Yeah. I think to some extent the fun also goes away na yaar aapka pura agar purpose ye pro banne ka hai pro banne ka hai pro banne ka hai to bacche jab hai to maza bhi to aana chahiye thoda khel hi to rahe end of the day na itna pressure dal dete hain hum itne young age pe ki agar aap ye nahi karenge to kuch nahi ho sakta aapka that becomes a sort of pretty traumatic environment for a kid to become anything in i guess anyway uh, we'll we'll do this again soon and also we'll be uh, coming to you guys from ludhiana where the indian women's league is currently on so we'll be doing some pretty in depth coverage of that uh, keep an eye out for that really thanks for coming in man good to Thank see you back also also to all the people who are watching just try spreading uh, this episode to all over the northeast man to all the people you have just spread it to all over the northeast so that the message goes out there that was the whole purpose of this uh, episode because you got an icon of the northeast right here and he's told you directly exactly things the way they are so just spread it spread the love and hopefully the conversation leads to even bigger and better things and hopefully we can keep it simple and collaborate and get things done in the next <laughs> few seasons yeah thanks for watching guys see you next week